Ross, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, briefly, I was wondering if you could kind of break down the um, running back room as it stands, as you expect it to stand heading into the 2020 season. And after that, kind of go into the two freshmen y'all brought in, Elijah Green and DJ Jones, and what you expect from them and what you like with them in, in recruiting them as a player. Well, um, definitely excited to be bringing back the um, the uh, guys that, that played last year. They bring a lot of maturity and experience to the group, and I'm fortunate to be going on my third year uh, working with Mike and, and, and uh, Javante. So that's uh, – gives me as a position coach a little bit of confidence knowing that, you know, got a group of guys that knows what to expect, especially in a time like this with all the uncertainty of how we've had to prepare and uh, have meetings on Zoom and, 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 and all those things. So it, it, it's, it's been good to have those guys coming back. But, you know, obviously having Mike Carter, who, uh, you know, sat down at the end of the year and had to make a decision and, and decided he wanted to come back and, and kind of continue to build on – uh, the success that he's had and also the success we had as an offense and as a program, you know, so it's good he's coming back and obviously he brings an explosiveness to the group. That's a guy that can do a lot of different things. And then Javante, you know, uh, built on a really good sophomore season, uh, you know, kind of uh, built some confidence and uh, became a more outspoken guy, you know, in the locker room and on the field. So just to have him back, I think he and Mike bring a great one-two punch and uh, did a great job leading a young guy in Josh Henderson, who had a couple chances in some games later in the season to make some plays and really got his shine doing the uh, also special teams units. But this spring obviously would have been his time to kind of separate himself and show what he could do on the offensive side of the ball. And unfortunate that he didn't get that opportunity. But uh, from a knowledge standpoint, uh, he's he's probably grown, probably uh, taking the biggest leap out of the group. And just from an X and O standpoint, uh, so those are the three guys that are returning. You know, uh, uh, minus talking about. Uh, British Brooks, who's a guy who's a walk-on, but very, very valuable guy on special teams. So all those guys have done a really good job. But then DJ Jones, like you talked about, is one of the freshmen that came in early. And, you know, um, uh, unfortunate for him again, a kid that busted his tail to graduate and didn't get a chance to go in the spring and compete. But he still uh, was able to come in and, and learn the offense and all those things. So uh, I think he's way ahead of the curve, and he's uh, excited to be back and get a chance to start practicing again with the guys. And then uh, Elijah Green, you know, another kid that uh, was coming early that uh, did a really good job for his high school, two-time state champion, um, going to be a really good football player. But, you know, like I said, DJ and Elijah are guys that, um, you know, once we start practicing here real soon with some of the walkthroughs and those things, I'll get a chance to get a feel for them a little bit more. Is there anything you can tell us kind of what you liked about them and recruiting them? There's a couple of things on, on the two freshmen. You know what? Um, both of those kids are very smart kids. Uh, love football. And, and, and that's one of the things I try to do. I try to talk to those guys um, uh, about what they like about football. You know, tell me some of the things you like. You know, tell me some of the football players you pattern your game after. Uh, tell me some of the old school football players that you like. Because to me, that kind of tells me what kind of mentality that they're going to have. Because at the running back position – you can see the things that, that obviously that show up on film, but you know, you gotta be a tough guy. You gotta be able to take yourself mentally to a, to a kind of nasty place at times to play the position. And uh, so just getting to know those guys, I could tell that they were tough. They were very competitive. Um, uh, you know, a guy like Elijah Green, two-time state champion, uh, really good competitive high level football in the state of Georgia. Uh, dad played in the NFL. So you could just tell he had good blood and he's a guy that, that's, that knows how to train and compete and, and then, you know, DJ Jones, the kid, military family. You know, mom and dad are both military. Kid has got a kind of a chip on his shoulder. Kind of felt like he was under-recruited. So, I like those guys. I mean, I like the guys that got an edge to them, some of the things that you can't evaluate. So, uh, I think both of those kids are going to come in and compete really hard. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. Thanks, Ross. Broke it down there. Thanks, Coach. Um, Andrew Jones, we'll go to you. Go ahead and unmute yourself since I can. Hey, Coach. Coach, I appreciate you. How important is it for running backs in your offense to be able to consistently catch the ball? And and how would you say that both Michael and Javante have grown in that role? Yeah, I tell you what, the game of football has changed a lot. I mean, it's not just about uh, handing the ball off to a guy 30, 40 times anymore. It's about touches. Uh, if you look at the top backs in the NFL, uh, you know, McCaffrey, uh, um, Alvin Kamara, which I was able to coach at the last stop I was at, um, uh, Saquon, you know, all, all those guys are guys that you have to, you know, figure out how you can get those guys touches and get them in space. 
And that's one thing I like about the offense that Phil uh, brings. And uh, he's, uh, he's always done a really good job of finding ways to get playmakers in space and uh, create touches. And uh, that's one thing that, you know, in our offense, because we don't huddle, you know, I tell the guys all the time, you have to be a guy that can do it all because I'm not going to be able to swap you out when we get to this play or get you back in. You have to be a guy that can do it all. You know, so obviously, uh, uh, you know, Mike is a guy that you can put in space, one between the tackles, block. He can do it all. And I think Javante opened up a lot of people's eyes because he's a guy that's got some of the best hands on the team. You know, so just because he's a bigger guy, I think a lot of times, they, you know, uh, it, it may be in your mind that you have to be a smaller guy to catch the ball. But he catches the ball really, really well. And that's one of the things that we look for in recruiting. You know, we have to go get guys that not only can run the ball in between the tackles, but they're comfortable lining up in an empty formation, you know, comfortable running quick game routes, you know. Uh, so those guys uh, really have fun with the offense because every week you don't know what to expect. It's not just an offense where we're going to hand you the ball but you're going to be a guy that uh, does all the things that get you prepared for the next level, uh, which is getting the ball to uh, those guys in space. So uh, I'm fortunate that all these guys got pretty good hands. Yeah, another question about Javante. He had a little bit of success late uh, two years ago, but last season obviously took off. How did you see his confidence grow during the course of the season? And was there a moment you recall where you thought, wow, he realized that he could play at a very high level consistently in the ACC? I tell you what, there's a moment. Uh, I did a clinic, uh, you know, this summer we did something really cool. We did clinics with the high school coaches uh, all around the country, but uh, a lot of the high school coaches in the state of uh, North Carolina tuned in. And on one of my clips, I said, this is the play that I think uh, he changed. And it was the first game versus uh, South Carolina. We threw him a swing pass. Uh, this was probably when we were behind about 14 points and we're going down to score in the first 90-something yard drive. And he caught a swing pass uh, toward our sideline, and he just ran over the safety. And when he got up, he got up, and Javante's a quiet guy. He's never really expressed himself a lot, but he got up and he kind of flexed at the sideline, and the sideline went crazy. And I remember that moment being on the sideline, and in my mind I said, he's ready. You know, because, you know, I, I think his freshman year he was just trying to find a place to fit in. But that moment in that game, I'll never forget it, was the moment I said he's ready. And – that's what you saw from him. I mean, you saw his confidence get better. And I tell you this, and his confidence has gotten a whole lot better. So if you look at freshman year, kind of a kid trying to feel his way around, sophomore year gained a lot of confidence. The sky's the limit for what he can do uh, his junior year because I think he understands that he fits uh, what we do offensively. His teammates respect him, and I think he knows he, he's good enough to dominate on this level. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. We'll go to uh, Pat James. Pat, go ahead. Hey, Coach, kind of on that note a little bit, just kind of what sort of steps are you hoping to see Michael and Javante continue to make to improve? You know, just um, um, I, I, I thought they did a really good job of, of uh, staying healthy. You know, and uh, a lot of that comes from I think they understand that, yes, one guy could have stayed in the game and probably ran for 1,800 yards, 1,900 yards, but I think they respect the fact that uh, their durability and their ability to stay healthy was based off having those guys fresh. And, you know, I know uh, uh, a lot of people will leave one guy in, but, you know, I think the, for, for the longevity of our season and for us to be able to stay healthy and, you know, just get these guys throughout the season, I think the way we spread those guys out and play them together, I think they understood that that was the best thing for them in the long run. Um, so I think the, 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 the ability for those guys to get back here and uh, work out with Coach Hess and uh, get stronger, uh, get back in shape. And, uh, you know, I say all the time the best ability – and a running back is durability, you know. So the fact that they can take care of their bodies and get back with our nutritional staff and get stronger, uh, you know, those guys can both stay strong and stay healthy, and we can still find ways to get both of those guys involved in the game. Um, and uh, shoot, I like to find another guy, you know, that uh, we can get involved. So if we can do those things. I think Mike and Javante and the rest of the group will be able to have some success this season. You mentioned how uh, Josh really improved from a X and O's perspective. Kind of what other ways did you see him just kind of evolve since he arrived on campus? Confidence. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, um, you know, he came into a group of guys that he wasn't called upon to have to come in and play last year. You know, so he was able to sit back and just learn the game. So after every game, I would go up to uh, uh, Josh after the game and say, tell me what you learned. And it, it was interesting to hear him say, Coach, I saw the ball security, how important it is. I saw how important it is to, to strain and get a first down. So he was able to see, because I think as a freshman, you think I'm ready to come play. But when you get into the game and you're on the sideline and you see all the moving parts of it, that's where you learn. 
you know, so he learned a lot um, as far as what the demands are that goes into being a college football player. And, um, you know, like I said, this offseason, this spring was going to be his chance to go out and show those things that he learned. And um, But he didn't panic. And, 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 and we didn't as a team. I think we've used this opportunity to uh, watch film a lot more, uh, be able to communicate and uh, talk to our players a lot more. And uh, those guys have been watching a lot of film. So I think his film studies improved. His confidence got better because through knowledge, you gain confidence. So I think he's probably uh, in his most comfortable spot that he's been since he's been here. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it, Pat. Appreciate it, Pat. Go to Alyssa. Alyssa, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, Coach, I know the players have been staggering back to campus. How's that whole process been, and how difficult is this trying to do all these protocols and kind of learning with this new normal here? Well, it's been great. You know, I think it all starts about your attitude that you have toward it. I, I think our kids have had a, you know, um, um, don't blink mentality as far as they, uh, they uh, trust uh, everything that we have in place for them. And, uh, you know, I think we have a great plan of, of how we slowly bring the guys back. And, uh you know, those guys have been excited about the process. Um, you know, just, just, just we're taking things slowly. You know, we're understanding that, that, that these are different times and we just have to be able to adjust, you know, and uh, you know, so far everything's been really, really good. Um, you know, being able to kind of see these guys just kind of get started with some classes and getting these guys back around the strength staff and all that. So uh, the great thing has been to see those guys together. You know, seeing those guys walk around the building, obviously everybody's practicing social distancing and, and, and taking all the precautions so that way we can make sure that we do all the things to uh, protect the program, uh, the players, and uh, try to protect our season. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. We'll go to uh, Gregory. Gregory, you're up. Hey, Coach. I was just kind of – I was just wondering what your expectations were for the backs this year and what do they need to do to meet those expectations? We just have to strive every day um, uh, to, to, to improve as a unit, you know, just uh, from an X and O standpoint, from, uh, from, 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 from getting stronger, from getting back in shape, you know, just obviously the time that we've had off, uh, you know, uh, away from being here in Chapel Hill. Uh, but my expectations are, are, are like they are every year. You know, we, we have to be one of the best units on the football field. And I think that's where you compete within each other. You know, the receivers want to be the best unit, the running backs, the offense. We just challenge ourselves every day to just do the right things on and off the field. And, um, and uh, so we, we just find different ways to challenge ourselves. You know, um, how we watch film, you know, is very competitive. Um, uh, once we begin to do walkthroughs, which, which, which NCAA will allow us to do that as time permits, we want to be the best in the walkthroughs. You know, just all the things that, that, uh, that will give us a chance to be the best unit, which will in turn make us the best football team in this conference and in the country. I think we try to find ways to challenge ourselves every day, uh, Greg. Last year, Matt came out pretty early saying that the running back room was the best unit. There were a lot of question marks with the offensive line, the receivers with Sam. Now the whole country knows that the wide receiver group is one of the best in the country. The offensive line has more cohesion and everyone knows what Sam can do. So has that uh, ramp up your, your running backs with that competition? You know, um, like I said, the, the, the competition that, that, that you have every day um, starts with on campus. You know, you have to push each other every day, unit by unit. And, um, um, you know, if I'm being honest, we, we have a deal where we just put blinders on and we just focus forward. We don't listen to the comparisons. Uh, we don't listen to any outside, you know, of, of, of what we have to do. Because in our room, we have a standard that we set for ourselves. And if we can go out every day and just push each other in the room, you know, Mike Carter every day is competing with Javante. Javante's competing with Josh. Um, so nothing changes. You know, I, I don't have to go and try to resell this thing uh, because when I first got here three years ago, I asked each of those guys, how great do you want to be? And the foundation was set. So when Josh came, he didn't have a choice. You know, now that Elijah Green's here, he doesn't have a choice. And we want to compete with each other so that we don't worry about the outside to the left or right, whether it's the, the next room. We want to work so hard every day that when the offensive line puts the film on, they get motivated. You know, the receiver group sees how hard we work, they get motivated. And then in turn, when the defensive line at Pitt or Clemson or whoever we play, they see us, they, they, they see us competing. You know, so uh, uh, we feed off the energy that the offensive line brings every day. We feed off the army going and, and, and catching big balls and finishing down the field. So I think that's the fun thing about our team. Our team is so competitive. 
And our kids, you know, love each other, but they love to compete against each other so much. So um, some of the outside uh, accolades and, and, and pushing us as a team, uh, of course, we'll hear some of it, but we got to stay focused on, you know, what's going on in between these walls here in Chapel Hill, and then everything else will take care of itself. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Gregory. Go back to Ross here. Ross, go ahead and unmute yourself. Got it. Hey, Coach, uh, you have a pretty unique coaching experience. You've, you've played and coached in only Power 5 schools. So I was wondering, you know, how UNC has been for you for three years. You, you coached under Larry Fedora and now two years under Mac or heading into your second year under Mac Brown. How does UNC compare and, and what's your experience been like at UNC compared to South Carolina, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, Tennessee? Yeah, and I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate. Uh, the Lord has blessed me. I, I've been able to coach at some very um, uh, uh, traditional, uh, tradition rich places. Um, I've been around some really good head coaches, I've been around some really good players. And, uh, you know, all that's led me to be here at the University of North Carolina. And uh, it's been great. You know, obviously to have a chance to 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 coach uh, under um, Coach Brown, and uh, just see the way he leads and motivates. Because I believe your program starts at the top and works its way down, and just being able to see how he treats his players, how he treats his staff, uh, how the former players come back and they react, um, uh, the reception that we get now when we go into local high schools uh, because of the brand that we have has been great. You know. Um, you know, the, the, the University of North Carolina has a logo that can go anywhere, you know. So it's been fun to be able to go uh, recruit the type of kids that fit us, that fit the program. That's what Coach Brown talks about all the time. We're going to recruit to a profile. So we get to go recruit kids and families that understand, you know, the combining of on the field and off the field, the academics, the life after football. Um, and the kids that we have here uh, are great. You know, um, um, they, 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 they come in the football building ready to focus on football because they woke up at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and they've been competing in the classroom all day. So it's easy for those guys to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, compete with some of the brightest minds in the country, and then transition at 2.30 to football because they've been competing all day. So that's the part I tell people around the country, all, all my other buddies I've um, in other schools or, or in this profession, that it's fun to coach these kids here because – they're so smart and they're driven to compete, not just on the field, but off the field, they compete the same way. So um, it's really been a breath of fresh air for me. And I've been a lot of really good places, but uh, University of North Carolina is very unique. And I'm uh, having a, a blast being here with Coach Brown and the rest of the staff. And then briefly, I mean, you mentioned a little bit about recruiting and the brand that UNC has. Um, how has it shifted maybe in the last, you know, even six months, 12 months, when this recruiting thing has really gotten rolling? And what have you noticed about how UNC is perceived locally, regionally, and even nationally with how y'all doing the recruiting trail? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, you know, being at other places and um, having to recruit against University of North Carolina, you always knew that it was a talent-rich state, you know, a state that had a lot of really good high school football players, high school coaching here is really good. Um, and then up until the Virginias and, 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 and along the East Coast, you know, it was a hotbed for recruiting. And you know, it was a sleeping giant, you know, um, um, you know, and obviously Coach Fedora did some really good things. And, and uh, you know, just to have Coach Brown back, uh, he has a blueprint. You know, and I think that's what families and, and coaches and uncles and, and, and everybody who understands Mac Brown and, and what that name means, now that he's back, you know, uh, it, it's just people want to be a part of it. You know, uh, kids and families want to trust someone who has a blueprint, you know, have done it before. It's hard to sell something where you want to do it for the first time. But if you've done it before, um, like Coach Brown has, we just present that. Hey, here's the package. Here's how you fit into it. We're going to recruit to a profile, and you fit it. And I think families are excited about that, that we selectively say, you fit what we want to do and in in what we want to present. And I think we fit you. You know, so I think it's a give and take. I think they feel like we give them enough to make them excited and comfortable as a family. And um, it's, I mean, it's been really great for us. You know, recruiting's going well, and it, and, 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 and it goes out to also the fan base. Everybody is so excited that these recruits that we're talking to, they see that football is very, very important, you know, so it's been fun um, um, and, and, and hopefully we continue the momentum. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Ross. We've got another one from Pat here. Just uh, in what ways will you guys miss Antonio Williams the most, both on and off the field? Leader. Leadership, energy, very unselfish. Um, 
um, you know, kind of like a grandfather in the locker room, um, all those things. I mean, just any word I can think of that talks about how mature, how much of a leader he was, those are the things that uh, you can't replace. You just hope that somebody saw him every day and will be able to carry that torch and how to be a great teammate, how to be the leader. And, um, you know, uh, from, a, from an X and O standpoint, you know, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll train guys to come in and take on that role, but just the stuff that's off the football field is the stuff you really can't replace. But like you said, you just hope somebody in the locker room, he rubbed off on somebody. Um, but his energy every day was infectious. Um, I had a chance to, to, to learn a lot. And, and for me, I'm a better coach when I'm coaching kids that I learn from. You know, just I'm sure, uh, Pat, the same way you. I mean, you, you're great at your profession. If you can learn from Andrew or, 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 or learn from Jeremy, just the relationships you have. Um, as a coach, it's the same way. I don't want to coach a guy that I can't learn something from, and he better learn something from me. So he's the guy that I learned a lot from. Uh, but the most important thing was just his leadership and how himself she was as a football player. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. JB, I'll call on you, but we got the rule. You got to turn the camera on. There you are. Now you got to turn your mic on. Throw your mic on, JB. I can't unmute you. There you go. Now? Yep. When did you start this rule? Where did this come from? Oh, we've been doing it for weeks now. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> hey, Coach. <laughs> hey, Coach, thanks so much for taking out time for us. Uh, I want to go back to your recruiting soundbite that you just gave as far as uh, how well that's been going for you guys. Obviously, you got another big name um, uh, yesterday for, with the cornerback. But I'm curious to know how much – aggression is being um, put into play when it comes to the recruiting and how much of it is it coming from Mac, you know, when it, when he comes to filtering that down to his assistant coaches, when you're out there on the recruiting trail, as far as being aggressive, like I'm not here to wait. I'm, I'm, we're here to compete now and go after championships immediately. Is that being taught at all in these recruiting sessions? Well, I'll tell you what, I, 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 I mean, a sports car is only aggressive as the foot that's on the pedal, you know, so, Mac Brown is definitely the foot that's on the pedal that's pushing the vehicle to go fast and be aggressive, and that's what you want. I mean, you want someone that's driving that vehicle to say, hey, let's test this thing out, see how fast it can go. And that's what he's allowed us to do. So he's told us to go be aggressive, go recruit the kind of kids that fit who we are and where we want to go as a program. And um, we've been able to aggressively go recruit, and we got a great product to sell. You know, we're, we're, we're a young football team. I think everyone around the country and the recruits were able to see that, you know, Coach Brown wants to put the best players on the field, regardless of how old or how young you are. And um, I think that's the part that's exciting. You know, these kids want to go somewhere where they can come in and play. They can help. Uh, we put a fun brand of offense on the football field as well as a fun, aggressive brand of defense on the football field. And, and that's what people want. I mean, they want to see the results. They want to see, can you go win? But, Again, going back to the, the, the foot being pressed on the gas pedal, it all starts with how aggressive our head coach wants to be. He's a very involved. He wants to know every kid. He wants to know their families. He wants to Zoom. He wants to text message with those guys. So it's easy to go sell a great product and also have someone who's pushing you just as hard. So, um, I mean, it makes it easy. It makes it easy. You know, we, we, we just got to go get the kids.